In this online lecture, we're going to review some principles about reaction kinetics that we should have learned in general chemistry. And let me remind you of some of these principles. What I'd like you to know is that the rate of a reaction is affected by three things here. Number one, the orientation, or sometimes called steric considerations. What does that mean? Well, let's say these are our reactants, A and B. In order for them to react with each other, they have to be in the right orientation. For our case, notice this is the correct fit of A and B. If these two reactants don't meet up in that orientation, the reaction will not take place. So a correct orientation is needed for A to react with B. The second factor is called energy of activation. This means if A and B meet up in the correct orientation, they also have to accept a certain amount of energy in order to turn them into product. If there is enough energy, then let's say, boom, they turn into product. Another factor that affects rate is the number of collisions. And this basically means the more A's and B's that combine, the more product you're going to get. So if you have a lot of A's combining with B's and you have enough activation energy, boom, they will turn to product. Now, these are the factors on a microscopic level. If you lump all these three things up together, then there's two macroscopic things that technically affect the rate of a reaction. And one of them is temperature. We should know that the higher the temperature, the faster a reaction will proceed. Higher temperature means that there's a chance that you'll have enough energy to surpass the energy of activation. It also increases the speed of the molecules, which increases the number of collisions. The other macroscopic factor here is reactant concentrations. You could think of it as simply the more reactants you have, the more product will process. You could also think of it as the more reactants, the more chances that the reactants will be in the right orientation. So I'd like you to know that always, no exceptions, increase the temperature, increase reactant concentrations, and you'll always get a faster reaction. This brings us to another kinetic principle. It's the principle of the rate law. And what we're going to see is that a rate law incorporates these two things, temperature and reactant concentrations. So let me show you an example of one. Let's say you have a reaction A going to B. The rate law of this reaction would be rate equals some constant K called the reaction rate constant. And K is a value that depends upon temperature. The higher the temperature the reaction is run at, the higher the K rate constant. Another input for this rate law is concentration of A. This would be an example rate law for A going to B. And notice the two inputs. You have K that depends upon temperature, and you have concentration of A, which means the higher the concentration of A, the higher the rate. So our rate law addresses the two factors, temperature and reactant concentrations. If there's only one species in your rate law, such as A, then we would say this is a first order reaction. Another example here is let's say we have two reactants, A plus B going to C. The rate law for this reaction could be rate equals K times concentration of A times concentration of B. This would be considered a second order reaction because the rate depends on both concentration of A and B. Sometimes you can even have rate laws that look like this, where one of the reactants has an exponent of 2. This simply means that B has a greater effect on the rate of this reaction than A. And the overall order for this reaction would be third order, which in this case is the exponent of 1 for A plus the exponent of 2 for B. However, let's dive a little bit deeper into this reaction rate constant K. Remember, he connects us to the temperature that the reaction is being run at. And there's actually a formula for K. And it looks like this. K equals A, which is called the Arrhenius factor, times E raised to the negative activation energy divided by R and T. The Arrhenius factor basically puts a value on the necessary orientation that the molecules need to be in in order to react. 
The equation notice also has activation energy. But here it is, temperature. This shows how temperature can affect K. There is a lot more to this equation, but it's beyond the scope of organic chemistry. For now, just be aware that an equation exists for K. And remember, this is not KEQ, which we learned in a previous online lecture was the concentration of products over the reactants. This is rate constant K, which is usually denoted by a lowercase k, where KEQ is usually denoted by an uppercase k. However, we can connect those two concepts right here. Let me show you. Let's say you have a reversible reaction. A converts to B, and then B breaks down and goes back to A. Since we have a forward and a reverse reaction, you can talk about the rate of the reaction going forward. The rate law could be, for instance, K1 times the concentration of A. And K1 is simply the rate constant going in the forward direction. However, the reverse rate doesn't have to be the same. In fact, the equation for the rate reverse would be, let's call it K inverse times the concentration of B. K inverse is simply the rate constant for B going back to A. However, at equilibrium is when the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the backwards reaction. So if this is true, we know that rate forward is K1 times A and rate reverse is K inverse times B. And watch what happens here. With the little algebra, if I bring A underneath B like this and I have K1 over K inverse 1, we know what this expression right here is equal to. That's concentrations of products over reactants, which remember is KEQ. So here's our connection. K forward divided by K inverse or reverse is always equal to KEQ. Tuck this away for later. We might need this in organic chemistry. However, one more principle we should know here is let's say we have this particular energy versus reaction progress diagram. Let's make sure we understand what a catalyst will do to this reaction. Remember, this top part of the hump here is the transition state, which we'll talk about in more depth in another online lecture. That, remember, makes this the activation energy. What a catalyst does is simply stabilize the transition state, which therefore makes the energy of it lower. Think about what that would do to this reaction. The new reaction coordinate diagram looks like this now which means what the catalyst effectively does is lower the activation energy. Which means, remember, the lower the activation energy, the more rapid the reaction proceeds. So, a catalyst works by increasing the rate of a reaction by simply decreasing the energy of activation. So there it is, our kinetic principles for organic chemistry. If you remember from general chemistry, there's a lot more to this. But this is enough for us to master organic chemistry.